Alright, what up? Welcome back to another episode of Detroit Hustling Business. You know how we do. Alright, well, here we are, still on our lockdown. Ain't nothing changed. So, we're here to kick it with you guys again. We came with a top five list yesterday, so we got another one coming up. Okay, before I go any further, let me introduce, once again, my lovely guest, the lovely Salam. Hey, everybody. There she go. Alright, well... We back today. Like I said, we just trying to kick it, and uh, we had some interesting things on our mind today. So we wanted to come to you guys and see what you thought. So we have a little debate. We need you guys to help figure this out, cause I know what I feel. I mean, she know what she feels. I need to know what you guys feel. So we gonna break it down the best we can. I'm gonna say what I think, and forget all that. We gonna get to it. So. <laughs> it is what it is. No, we got I another, got this. She, 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 she got it. I got this. We got another top five list, okay? So today's top five, and I'm gonna keep kicking these top fives out. All right, well, I'm gonna keep kicking the top fives out while we're on this lockdown. So today's top five, it should be near and dear to everybody's hearts out there. Top five most influential people from Detroit. Okay. All right. That's a let's listen. She say all right, but you guys gotta understand something. This is a dog ass list. I mean, Pe but it, it it could be it could be anything. It could be from oh sports, music, yeah. business. Yeah. Anything, any any and, category. And that that's the beautiful thing. The categories are limitless. It's not just stuck in one category. We're talking a broad spectrum. And that's why I said it's going to be a dog list. Because we had some hell of a people come from Detroit. Out of Detroit. Sure have. You know. And listen. We say Detroit. And we say Detroit. So, and all the surrounding cities. You know. If you're from Lansing, Flint, Grand Rapids, Say, and all that. It's all love. We all from Michigan. Detroit just a big major city. Anybody from here. Around here, we all know what's up. So it's all love everywhere across Michigan, period. So we're going to kick this list off. And when we start naming these lists, we're naming some heavy hitters. And for those that don't know, you're going to start to realize how important Detroit, Michigan, how important our city, our hood, our culture was to this world. You're going to recognize. Uh, so yeah. without further ado, let's kick it. All right. So, start the list off. All Top right. five most influential people that came from Detroit, all right? Or surrounded cities from Michigan, period. Kick it off. To me, number one, Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks. Whoa. Okay. I like that. I that like was that. a movement. So, now that's listen. That's a movement there. That's a movement. Okay, now we're talking. That, that's influential because Rosa Parks. She didn't get in the back of that bus when they tried to make her get in the back of that bus. She said no. Nope. She said no. She stood her ground. And, at the, and listen, at that point in time, that was unheard of for a female, a black female in the 60s. To stand up. To stand up to That's a white man. That's a beautiful man. thing. That was strong. That beautiful. was strong. Because a lot of people would have just been like, I mean, we just keep it real. A lot That's of people. That's inspiration. Absolutely. That, absolutely. that changed the, the view of many women like it 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 gave yeah. them strength it gave yeah. them women that and listen no. that will that that, that drive. fight but listen women and men yes black people but period. you know you know black but, brown people period i mean yeah, of course all that was going on but it's like women have always even till this day yeah. women are treated differently than men i mean yeah yeah it is what it is hey woman just be quiet a little bit because i'm trying to tell you <laughs> Out of here. I'm yeah, just trying okay. to tell you as a man. What I'm Wait trying to say when this camera I'm goes off. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> Love your woman and respect your woman. I'm just blessed. Yeah, when we stop. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, it's just all going to change. <laughs> all right. All right. So Rosa Parks is a listen. That's a good that that that's a good list, man. That's a uh, I'm, I'm a, that's a good name to uh, throw, uh, start off with. She was strong. She started a movement. That was that Martin Luther King Jr. time too. So all right. So yeah. you say Rosa Parks. All right, now check this out. 
I'm gonna follow that same list. Let's talk about like Aretha Franklin. We ain't gotta talk about everybody, but we just gonna throw some names out. Cause the thing is, if we just we can't just say five people. The list is long. People I mean, it's, came from, <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah, that's hard to even limit. Yeah, cause we didn't had a hell of an impact on this nation. People I mean, from Detroit, man. When so. you look it up, it just it's unbelievable how many people came from Detroit. Yeah. That did something. Absolutely, yeah. we we didn't have a hell of an impact, man. I mean, this, they this country ain't what it is without Detroit's impact. So, all right. So I'm just gonna, like I said, we're just gonna throw some names out, and we're gonna throw some names out, and then we'll figure out who's the top five. So we got Rosa Parks, we got Aretha Franklin, cause she was in the game for a long time. Yeah. She used to see for Martin Luther King in his living room when she was just a young girl. And then you go back and look at her funeral when she passed away. Rest in peace to the queen. Rest in peace. That funeral will let you know what you need to know. The queen is soul, baby. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a that, that, that's a mention. Okay, well, what about this one? Barry Gordy. Oh, shit. I said, oh, shit. Where would many of these artists be Damn. Damn. without him? Hey, but listen, though, you could have said... about that. No, they, go ahead, girl. I mean, seriously. Talk to me. He... He started it. Yeah. Diana Ross, The Temptations. Um, hmm. You can add. Listen, Mike was on Motown. Yep. Like she said, The Temptations, Diana Ross. The Listen, in the 60s, 70s, in the late 50s, 60s, 70s, Motown was the deal. I mean. All the hottest acts were for Motown. So, we can say his name now. Uh, we should have brought his name up later in the game. But we gonna say his name now. Yeah. Cause we could have named some under bosses. We could have named some under bosses like Diana Ross, Aretha Franklin, but we can go straight to the boss. Barry Gordy. Because he's the one that created Motown. Yeah. He was the CEO, co founder. He laid that whole blueprint. And he was the man. When Detroit was on top of the game, as far as the music goes. In Motown era, Barry Gordy was the man, flat out. So I got one thing. So yeah, that, that that's a good name. So we ain't gotta mess around with the other bosses. We'll go straight to the boss, Barry Gordy, CEO and founder of Motown. For all you young kids that don't know about Barry Gordy, man, go. Hey, listen, you got Google, Google that name. Yeah. All right. So got we got better that. to do. You stuck in the house. You know, but just another honorable mention of under that, Anita Baker. I just yeah. want to show her some love because that's a Detroit native. I love Anita Baker. Anita Baker was the jam. You know, my sister Kim used to sing Anita Baker and she thought she sounded like her and everything. Kim, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Anita was the shit. Oh, well, you got to sing for me, Kim. <laughs> hey, talk to her, man. But like, plus, like you said, though, The Temptations, they were like one of the most influential groups of all time, Temptations. I mean... Shit. Yeah. Aaliyah, were, Aaliyah came from Detroit. Oh shit, Aaliyah. Aaliyah, if you know, rest, rest in peace. peace. To the queen. If she didn't, yeah. If she didn't pass away, can you imagine where she would be right now? Yes, I can. She, she's acting. She acted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She would be up there. Hey, listen. That's why I say yes, I can. Because you, you know, when you say that name, you know what I can imagine? Hmm. Beyonce. That yeah. was Beyonce before Beyonce. That's what I think of. Straight when up. I think of Aaliyah, I think of she would be... On that Beyonce level. Beyonce level. Because she was making hits after hits. Everything she touched turned to gold. I mean, and she had, I mean she, and had, she had good people behind her. Backed absolutely. her. She was solid. And she stayed I mean, except for the whole. <laughs> nah, <you know. laughs> but, but musically, like you say, she was in movies. Oh, she was just like her and voice. I loved her voice. It was just pure, man. It, yeah, it was just She pure. was just a beautiful person to me. Yeah. It, it, there it is. In and out. In and out. Just a beautiful person, personality. Yeah. Her morals, everything. Down to earth. Yeah. Yep. So she, 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 yeah, she, she deserves all the roses people. Yes. Get. So Aaliyah, yeah, I love you, girl. And one of the best things about her, her birthday is February 16th. Oh, that's probably why I love her so much. My birthday is February 16th. That's, you see, that's, that's what it is. <laughs> I love her is. because that's they share a birthday. All right. So, yes. So yeah, definitely, man. Shout out to Aaliyah as well. So let's talk about some of the but we already said did we did we say Diana Ross too? I think yeah, we, we did. Her. Diana yeah. Ross temptations are old schools. Okay. 
All right, so uh, let's. But let's talk about my dog. Yes, they be Detroit Bound, Eminem. Because we talking about influential Eminem. He was the voice. Yes, they, and he rapped for the city. Eight Mile. Oh, yeah. a movie called Eight always. Mile. Okay. You always rap for that shit. And where he's from, whatever the, you know, the, the, the boundaries and all that, he always rep that city and he put Detroit so love to Detroit. So let's always show love. He loves his hometown. Absolutely. Every day. Uh, Kid Rock. Kid Rock. That's another one. Kid you know? Rock, yeah. Kid Rock. That's a crazy. <laughs> Man. I forgot about Kid Rock. We was really uh, we really were talking, talking about him yeah. the other day. Kid Rock is that dude, man. I love his versatility, man. It's crazy. Kid Rock can go from rap because listen, I remember Kid Rock from the nineties, early nineties, and he was just straight little young white dude, hip hop shit. Then he go from hip hop to like some country to some rock, and he just he he did his thing. He flipped this shit. He he, he was live, man. Kid Rock's the man. So. Definitely shot Kid Rock out. Mm -hmm. Who you got? Oh, I got somebody. Go ahead. Are we sticking to the music? No, we anything. Listen, okay. Anybody, man. We're right. talking about anybody out All there. Right. Anybody uh, represents Detroit or anywhere around Detroit in Michigan. Period. We got a lot of. Okay, names so I did not know this, but this is like recent to me. Tom Selleck. Tom Selleck. That's a <laughs> yeah, I did not know. I was like, what? Tom Selleck. Hey, listen. I man. love his movies. Tom Selleck was He's... the man back in the 80s. You know, yeah. 80s and 90s. So a lot of people who don't know Tom Selleck, he was an actor. Magnum P.I. Magnum P.I. He had that thick mustache. That, yeah. He used to remind me of, uh, what's the other dude? Uh, Burt Reynolds. Oh, okay. I used to think Tom Selleck and Burt Reynolds was the same person. I mean... <laughs> well, I suppose to think they were the same person. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Be confused, like which one is he?" So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so shout out to him. What about John Witherspoon? Oh, John Witherspoon, not old pops. Yes. Bang, bang, bang. He's from Detroit. There it is. Shout out to John Witherspoon. Hey, one thing I want to say though, fellas, you can't be pussy whipped. You got to whoop that pussy. <laughs> That's my dog. <laughs> Shout out to Pops, man. John Witherspoon told us that right there. So uh, make sure you uh, take heed to that. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a good shout out. That's a good shout out, man. John Witherspoon. Oh, well, listen. Because a lot of people don't know this. So I'm going to put you up on game. The man who wrote and created one of the best movies of all time, if not the best movie, The Godfather. No, oh. that's the best Man, the whole Godfather series. Three movies. Damn, part one, two, and three. Part two being the greatest. That's but, uh, all I watched when I was pregnant. Oh, uh, man. Francis the Godfather. Ford. Godfather. That was it. That Francis was it. Ford Coppola. So, y'all look that up. If you guys know anything about the Godfather, which if you don't, man, you really just slip it. How do you not? You sleep. How do you not? How do you not? It's wait, up there wait, with wait, Scarface up. and all that. All that. And listen, I'm going to tell you the truth. <coughs> like I said, it was a trilogy, part one, two, and three. One and three, it was cold. But part two, it was just something different and authentic. Part two was... It was the breakdown. It was like yeah. the transition. It was... Oh, God. Part two So was, I'm ready to watch them. Hey, All we, three. We might cut these characters I mean, and go watch it right now. So yeah. we're out of work, so... Hey, might as well. We, matter of fact, I, I, we, yeah, there you go. You don't lie down. Go watch Godfather, watch them all, but definitely make sure you pay attention to part two. Because Godfather part two was even better than Scarface. I'm going to keep it real. Yeah, I love Scarface. I love Scarface, yeah. but I like Godfather better. So, there it is. Another, another Detroit native, Francis Ford uh, Coppola. Coppola, however you say his name. Alright? Uh, oh, shout out to the man. Like I said, he ain't from Detroit, but still. Floyd. Money Mayweather, Floyd Mayweather, baby, undefeated. 50 and 0, 50, you want to know, whatever he is. Floyd, Mad uh, Floyd Mayweather, for whatever you think about him, for his antics and all that extra shit. <laughs> he one of the greatest boxers, pound for pound of all time. Do what you do. That man is a beast. You can't touch him defensively. He got them hands, he do his thing, and... 
you know, you, he's one of the guys you're going to appreciate him when he's gone down the line. You can look back and say, yo, Floyd was one of the greatest, straight up. Uh, so, yeah, so shout out to Floyd of Michigan Navy. And he just loses his... Um, he ain't never lost. No, 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 no. No, I'm about to say, no. don't talk about a fight. He ain't never lost. He's undefeated. The mother of his children, did she just pass away? Oh yeah, and um, somebody oh, else. Yeah, he did too. Somebody else close to him. Oh no! Oh damn! Oh yeah! Rest in peace, Uncle Roger. His uncle. His uncle. His uncle. Like right, Ro right yeah. after his the mother of his mm -hmm. kids passed. It's about away. a very close, like within a, a week, week or, or two. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. I was like, so. And let prayers me say, out to you. All day, all day. And let me say something about that because Roger Way, uh, Roger Mayweather was his trainer for a long time. Now his father, okay, let me break this down, just because I gotta break this down real quick, because I'm a, I'm a boxing fan. So Money Mayweather, his father, Floyd, May, Floyd Mayweather Sr. was a boxer, he was a beast, he was nice. He, he was real nice. Then he had Floyd, Floyd came up, but they started bumping heads, because the father was coaching the son, so they started bumping heads, so he took on the, uh, as a trainer, he took on his uncle, Roger. And Roger was, he was there for the majority of his career. He really trained him to be, like I said, one of the greatest of all time. So, missing that, that's a big Did piece. his uncle box? His, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. he was a boxer. He wasn't like a well-known boxer like that, but he boxed in his day. Okay. But his, his main bread and butter was being that trainer. Okay. And, Didn't know that. Oh, yeah. And you talk to Floyd something new. all day. And that, that was like a, a father figure to him. So that, that, trust me and believe when I tell you that's a big, big loss for Floyd losing his Uncle Rogers. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, that's what, uh, so rest in peace to Roger Mayweather. So that's a good call, though. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we got that right there. But it, I'm going to say this right now because... I'm talking about the most influential person in Detroit, from Detroit, ever to come from there. This is number one. This is above everybody. And I'm going to say it right now. And don't nobody debate this. <laughs> nobody. ICP. <laughs> you understand? ICP is the greatest thing to ever come out of the city. I don't know what you're talking about. All right, I'm just bullshit. What are you talking about? <laughs> hey, listen, I'm just bullshit. No, right? I, I think it's Uncle Cracker. <laughs> hey, hey, hold on, hold on. You might be right. You might be Uncle Cracker. Okay? Uncle Cracker. So that's a talk. Listen, Uncle Cracker, there we go. Me, man. I need to know who's the greatest. But uh, <laughs> listen, Uncle we know Cracker, who's the hands player. down. All right. Hey, well, I, I, I'm gonna keep it real, right? I was never, Let him know that. I, I was I was never an ICP fan. <laughs> I, I could just never get with that uh, the Jigglos or whatever it was. Uh, yeah, uh, I could I could I could never get down with that. But listen, they still from the way, so <laughs> still shout out to them guys, man. ICP and them guys. Oh, but I did you. I can't tell that story because you're here. Uh, I can't tell that story because you're here. But fellas, I'm gonna holler at you later on. Because I used to know somebody who messed with somebody from them and all that. But uh, anyway, so yes, I mean, let's continue with the list. Uh, oh, most influential people from the city. I'm putting this in. I'm putting them on the list. Big major shout out. Big Meech. I knew you were going to say that. Stop playing with me. I just knew you were going to say that. Hey, listen, Big Meech. All right. We well, don't got to go into details and all that. For those that know, that right, know, well, no those that don't know, don't need to know. But if you want to know, Google most influential. Come on, big meets, big shout out. Big homie from Southwest. You understand me? Grew up on Essel. I know the brother personally, so that's what it is. So that's what's up, big meets. Uh, and we're gonna stop there. But uh, we're gonna stop there. <laughs> uh, 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 oh, what about the uh, the guy from the little show? Uh, he ended up getting knocked for some uh, cocaine, went to prison. Tim Allen. That's the name, Tim Allen? No. What's what are you name? talking about? The comedian. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the tool man. He got, really? His name's Tim Allen, right? Yeah. Yes. Tim Allen, oh, man, do your homework, girl. Tim Allen back in the day. I did not know that. Man, he got busted with a lot, a big amount of cocaine. Wow, was I moving. did not know that. Now, I also got to say this. He's a... Yeah, he's a... <laughs> 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 but, uh, 
But I also got to say this, though, because they said, you know, he kind of told on somebody and did something and all that. I, listen, I don't know. But they say he got not. He told on somebody. His man got not. He got out. So, I, listen, I don't know about all that. But uh, I do know that, hey, Tim Ellis from the way, and he went on to make it big. But that's just the honorable mention. Uh, I'm not putting him in the top five, all right? So, that's what that is. Uh all right, so listen, bottom line is we done named a lot of names. Uh, so we're going to kind of try to wrap it up and get the top five under control because we done named a lot. All right, I got one for you. But let's let's get it, bring it in. All right. Hey, who, who got the influence? Let's go. Mike Illich. Oh, shit. Mike Illich. Mike Illich Mike is a Illich. beast. I mean, anyone from Michigan knows who he is. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone out of Michigan knows who he yeah. is. You ever had a Little Caesars pizza? I mean, before? who hasn't had a Little Caesars? Damn. That's the best pizza out there to me. Okay, but hold on. Let, 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 let me say this right quick. I'm going to let you get back to that. But you say Mike Illich, but I'm going to put somebody up against him. All right? Because I'm going to say Dan Gilbert. All right? So you got a businessman. Mm. I got a businessman. We're going to put them toe to toe. Okay. So who's your... Okay, just do this. Name your top five. Just wrap it up. Name your top five. I need to hear it. Who's your... Who's My your, top who's, five yeah. influential? Yeah, because we want to talk. All right. Rosa Parks. Barry Gordy. Okay, okay. I agree with that. I agree with that. Uh, Mike Illich. Henry Ford. Oh, damn. We didn't, you know... We never get... Oh, damn. Henry Ford. Oh, I mean, obviously. God. Listen. I mean, without him... And what what on, that man. family Ford, has accomplished? Ford automobiles, the automobile that's, period. That's worldwide. That's oh my god. I he mean, he might be Ford. number one. So that's what one, two, three, four. One more. Man, so someone else that came from this area, Thomas Hitman Hurts. Oh, the Hitman. Hit the Hitman. Okay, okay, okay. So, okay, I like that. I like that. All Those right. are my five. So that's your top five. All right, boom. So your top five is Rosa Parks, Henry Ford. Uh, Barry Gordy. Barry Gordy. Okay. Thomas Hitman Hearns and Mike Illich. Yep. Okay, so that's her top five. I like that top five, but I don't love it. Okay. <laughs> so I'm agreeing with the... I got three that I agree with, okay? We're putting Rosa Parks... She's at the top of the list, most influential, okay? I put Barry Gordy at the top of the list. Very influential with that whole Motown vibe, everything, and everything he's done beyond that. And I'm putting also... Uh, Henry Ford. This? Henry Ford. That, listen, that might be number one. That might be the number one most influential person in this country, period. You understand me? And the fact that he's from Detroit, that might be the number one. Excuse me. So, there it is. That's the top three, but the last two, we about to scrap <laughs> because she got a businessman on the list and an athlete. I have a businessman and an athlete, so I'm. She's going with Mike Illich. I'm going with Dan Gilbert. She's going with Thomas Hitman Hearns, straight from Detroit, used to box, champion, crunk gym, all that. But I'm going with Magic Johnson. Okay, and I understand he's from Lansing, but Detroit is still claiming him. Cause he's from my way. Okay, but why you say why you say Magic Johnson? What 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 um, what? <laughs> oh, talk about listen. Hold on. Why did I say Magic Johnson? Let me tell you something. Tell me something about Thomas Hearns. Because when I say Magic Johnson, it's gonna it's gonna kind of put your dude to shame. I mean, so give your guy his 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 accolades. Give him his flowers. You understand how they say, to. give him his flowers, and I'm going to give him back his. Okay, and he's the first there. boxer to win five weight divisions. Damn, five separate weight divisions? Yes. That's a hell of a feat. He's in, in the International Boxing Hall of Fame. Okay. Oh. Uh, like, his, fir his first 17 fights were a knockout. His first 17? First 17. Damn. That's, hey, listen, that's some real shit. His mom was a, bo a boxing promoter, so they had a company called mm -hmm. Hearns Entertainment, which oh. promoted Mike Tyson. Okay, then. I am Mike. Okay. 
well, well, listen. Yeah. Listen, I, listen I'm going to keep it real. Out of 67 I, fights, 48 was a knockout. Damn. 61 wins, 5 losses, 1 draw. 61 wins. Listen. Out of 67. That's a, Listen, he, he was a beast. And you compare that to, like I'm saying, I said Floyd Mayweather, right? Floyd only got, what, 51, 51 wins? He's like, he's undefeated, but 51 or 52 wins or 50, whatever it is. I mean, that's pretty, pretty amazing. No, that's, that's really amazing. That's amazing. Thomas the Hitman Hearns was a beast. Still one of my favorite boxers of all time, even though I give a edge to Sugar Ray Leonard. That's just my dog. This is my guy. We had similar styles. And I used to throw these things, too, for those that don't know. I'm, I'm nice with these. Uh, I'm still nice with them, so don't run up on me. <laughs> just don't run up on me because I'm still nice with them. Uh, <laughs> so, all right, so I, I like that. I, li I like that argument. However, Magic Johnson, he's from, like I said, he's from Lansing, Michigan, right? This brother won a national championship with Michigan State in college against Larry Bird in a national championship. It was him against Larry Bird. He beat him, okay? Then he gets drafted to the NBA. As a 19-year-old, he goes to the NBA to the Los Angeles Lakers. His rookie season goes to the NBA Finals, and he was he was a guard. He was a six-nine point guard. Kareem was on his team. He got hurt, injured. He had to step in his rookie season as a rookie, first year in the NBA. He had to start as a center, as a you know against the seven-footers in the NBA Finals. Started had like 40 points or something like that. He ended up being the, uh, the finals MVP, won the championship in his rookie year. That was his first year. He won five NBA rings all together. Five championships, okay? Okay. So I'm just letting you know, he was a beast. Led the league in assists. How many, four years, was a beast. And we know he was one of all, he's the, the greatest point guard all time. Then we're going to talk about his business. He's part owner of the Los Angeles Dodgers. He was a part owner of the Los Angeles Lakers at one point. He owned business in Starbucks. He owned uh, his franchises in Burger King, TGIF Fridays, uh, Magic Johnson Theaters. I mean, this brother's making major, major, major business moves after basketball. And he's the first person to ever have AZ get rid of it. He didn't get rid of it. He got rid of it. He didn't get rid of it. He's the first guy to pay you, to get rid of AIDS or HIV, whatever you, you want to say. He don't get rid of it. He had HIV and he, he don't got it no more. No, it's undetectable. That's different. That's because he ain't got it no, no more. No, it's undetectable. Man, he's There's the first difference. guy to he pay to get, get rid, rid of, of AIDS. You can't, how do you get rid of Man, something you, that's in your blood? You got to ask him. That's not, and when, did he have like a complete blood transfusion? Man, listen, let me tell you something. He got rid of it. He had AIDS. You have AIDS. HIV. And okay, got rid but of it. if you don't understand the whole process of that thing, it's that's why it's so easy to believe that. Well, that's why he's the number one legend because he got rid of AIDS and can't nobody else do it but him. Okay, you can be, go from HIV positive to AIDS because of the the strength of the virus. Okay. If you take your medication, you could be undetectable and be HIV positive, but undetectable where you can't pass it on to somebody. Yeah, but listen though. The strength of his gangster said he had <laughs> HIV and he got rid of it. All right, all right, all right. So, I'm trying to tell you. Okay. That's how gangster Magic Johnson is, so I'm putting him on the top okay. five. All right? And he worth $700 million, almost a billionaire. Okay. I mean, he's doing big things. And he got rid I... of HIV. <laughs> okay. So, man. All right. So, now, let's... If he let, did, let, hey. Let, let, let's he let everybody else know how to do it. Now, he going to get... He, Listen, everybody else don't have the deep pockets like he got. Well, so, he needs to start. Unfortunately, he they, could donate to the Ryan White Foundation. And maybe he needs and to help do that. people get maybe rid of he it. He needs to do that, but yeah, make it more affordable. That that's beyond him. He just he just had to hook up, but I the people that uh, that all that run all that. That's a whole other story for a whole other day. Yeah, that's the, right? that's too deep. We to might get into. on that one day, but that's a whole other level. That's beyond Way his pay deep. scale. All right, so let's just break down these right, last two because next. this is a hell of a fight. Mike Illich. Mike Illich against Dan Gilbert. That's a good that, listen. That that's a good matchup because Dan Gilbert, to me, he is the main and sole reason why Detroit, specifically downtown Detroit, 
It's went from a ghost town to all the businesses turned down or shut down. Well, nobody downtown to that shit about. Well, ain't back. nobody downtown now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, it's a ghost that's, 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 that's a whole, that's, but, that's the pandemic. Okay, this is the past few years, but you can't, you can't discredit what Mike Illich has done. I mean, true. I mean, Comerica Park. Yeah. Red Wings. Wow. Um, Little Caesars. Wow. That's Ooh. the biggest. Ooh. He Fox, Not ready. Fox Theater. Not ready. Um, what else? The Hot Ready. What yeah, else you need Little to know? Caesars. I'm just saying, but what about the charities that... The charity foundations that Mike Illich and his family has created. Yeah, that's cool. But you can go get a five dollar hot dollars and it's already right there ready yeah. on you. Um, that's huge. No, I mean <laughs> I his family. His family has helped so. That family has helped so many people, and it started and yeah. created the uprising of downtown. Mm. Everything they've done. Look at the Little Caesar Arena. Yeah, yeah. Look yeah. at all the jobs created from that. Look at all the people coming down there. Comerica Park. Yeah. But listen, I'm gonna say this though. That's that that that's true. That's all good and true. But I mean if he didn't pass away, can you imagine what else he would have done? But but I don't Even say though this, his though. family's taken over, but still. But he had all these accumulations in the nineties, early two thousands. In Detroit, downtown, everything still took a dip. Well, we're the largest it, city. It was go, we were, we're going the, through. We're the biggest city in the country, in this nation, to ever go bankrupt, right? And during that time, <laughs> Dan Gilbert <laughs> came along and he invested up to this point $5.6 billion into downtown well, Detroit. Okay, let me And use he it. is one of the biggest reasons why the city has turned around and we are now on our way back up, okay? Because he's, like I said, $5.6 billion in the downtown and uh, over 100 some properties. That's nothing to sneeze at, okay? Well, I mean, shit. The he, owner it of was already, it was Bay, the It was it, already going in that direction. No, 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 no. But he was he started that because everybody, like I said, it went bankrupt. Everybody was ready to leave Detroit alone. He came in and said, okay, listen, I'm going to take this situation and turn it into something positive. It put a lot of money and started... Yeah, because he was buying up development that was dirt cheap. Exactly. But yeah, when okay. you've got billions, of course you're going to do something. Okay, but, come in there and do that. But listen, though. But, well, hold on. Let me say this, though. What happens when you buy all these buildings, abandoned buildings, what do you got to do to bring those buildings you gotta, the park? you got to tear them down and develop it. And who does that? He's doing that now. No, but hold on. This is what I'm saying. He's not doing that. Who does that? He has workers. Yeah, he's he's creating jobs. There you go. To build up this, build so up you Detroit. know how many jobs he created during I'm not, this I'm recession not to build Detroit back up? I'm not saying. I'm working. I mean, he I, gave me a job. I work for one of his companies, Bedrock. You understand? I'm just saying. No. So I might have a little bias, but. <laughs> yeah. You think a <laughs> but little? But my point is, Detroit was but, going, not going to the dust. Detroit was in the dumps. And he, it was at a standstill. It was paused for a minute. Standstill. But I mean, I look at it as was if it wasn't for him, Mike was Illich. Dirt. Bankrupts. We filed for he, bankruptcy. That was yes, just man. mismanagement of money of the. Uh, for, oh, yeah, all of that. them. But the jobs were there. Yeah, shout out to my dog Kwame, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mismanagement. Yes, he, you know, things you know, just disappear. Since you, wanted, since you want to bring up that, I'm going to shout out my dog Kwame. But, but I'm not I'm discrediting him. Dan, yeah, he's doing amazing things yeah. down there. And thank God because, because it's bringing life. life. The life is starting to come out of and Detroit. Money back into Detroit. And now we're back. It's being it's yeah. it's becoming more of a community for everybody. Yeah. It's not where people yeah. want to go down there and they want to do things and they want to. But, it, but my, and that's nice yeah. to but finally it, see it that. It took a big time billion. It to, used to be like to that. To believe in the city to bring it back, and he was the one that did that, and he's the put the most. Do you money think in he downtown. believed in the city, or do you think that was a, a business move? It was absolutely a business move all day, but. That business move created opportunities for a lot of people, and it created an opportunity for the city to come back up, and that's what we've done. So I give mad love to my dog, Dan Gilbert, even though he kind of a whole ass nigga in the same sense because he dogged my dog LeBron when he left Cleveland and all that. Yeah, but, like a little crybaby. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, so 
I'm just saying, man, props to him because I mean he got the money. So that that, that listen, like I said, that, that that's a good fight, but I might have to give it to Lynch. I don't know. You know I might what? have to give it to Mike How about y'all? How about y'all comment? There we go. And vote on who's right, me or him. There we go. Because we we definitely need people to let us know because that's a good debate. We need everybody out there to let us know. We gonna lock down the top three. Rosa Parks, Henry Ford, Barry Gordon. All right. So who's gonna fill the last two slots? Thomas Hearns or Magic Johnson? All right. That's that's the most. Or four. Mike five, Illich. Mike Illich. Or Dan Gilbert. Or Dan Gilbert. We need help with this one because, like I said, I'm riding with Dan. She's riding with Mike. So let us know what you guys think because that's what's up. So. There we are. So we're going to close out for now because it's been too long. So I know you guys got to get back to doing what you do. Everybody's on this lockdown. So Detroit Hustlers Business, we brought this to you. Please help us with our debate and pass a little time while you do so. So in the meantime, between time, I just want to say, Chris Tanner, on behalf of my lovely co-host, lovely Salam, we want to say peace and love to everybody out there. Let us know what you think. Help us finalize this top five. Detroit's most influential. Influential. All right. Until then, we'll see you next time. Peace, love y'all. We out. Peace.